Joining us now for some Perspective is World Policy Institute Senior Fellow, Tricia De Janeiro. She teaches this course on international security at NYU. Uh, she joins me now via Skype uh, from Virginia. Uh, Tricia, good to have you with us. My first question to you is, in defining his Middle, Middle East policies, President Trump said in this speech that it will be based on real-world outcomes, not inflexible ideologies. Uh, how do you interpret this? Well, I think he's sending several messages there. First of all, he's sending messages to, to Russia and China, the other uh, near-peer um, parties in the in the region that the U.S. is is not going anywhere, and it's not going to be hands off at all. There's no indication of that. Um, you know, and I think his speech kind of showed that. Uh, also, he's entrenched himself more in Saudi Arabia, basically saying, "Look, you know, we're going to we're going to stick to the policies we've been sticking to, but you have to also take your part." in preventing some of this religious spread of religious ideology. And I think he gave Iran a little bit of that as well. But it was kind of interesting to me that, you know, he, he had this peaceful speech <laughs> about no, you know, religion and, and ideologies, yet he, you know, condemned Iran um, for things they're doing in the region, which the Saudis are, are probably equally responsible for. And in addition to that, he signed uh, a, one of the largest arms deals with Saudi Arabia. And I don't think that that shows an indication that the U.S. is really talking about any kind of peace. So, His realities seem to be military. <laughs> so it could be a mixture of all values and interests um, alongside ideology. So that is really to my next question, which is about the U.S.-Iran relations. Uh, we know Iran's newly re-elected leader um, Rouhani is considered a moderate who improved ties, actually, with the previous U.S. administration. Now, with Trump's uh, very harsh rhetoric, do you think there could be a missed opportunity for U.S. and Iran to improve relations? Absolutely. There's going to, you know, I mean, I think Trump, Trump is playing, President Trump is playing several several sides to this this game or or this card. And I mean, one one is that he continues to honor the agreement with Iran and lifting, you know, sanctions step by step. And the other is he's threatening Iran if they don't behave. And I think, or behave, whatever, if they don't do exactly what we're telling them to do, which again is contrary to his speech. But, you know, I mean, and I think when it comes down to it, we are missing opportunities with Iran. I mean, they're a country that's moving forward quite quite rapidly. Um, there are a lot of internal economic changes that are happening. There's a lot of potential economic and business interests that can happen there. And I think that, you know, this administration needs to be very, very worried about that. They act, they're acting like a near peer competitor in that they support other nations militarily, for sure. But I mean, we do that, Russia does that, China in some instances has some support uh, of other nations as far as military power goes. So, I mean, I think we have to look at this a bit more critically. Uh, finally, Tricia, I want to ask you about uh, Israel. Um, from here, President Trump heads to Israel where he said uh, he hopes to make the ultimate deal, as he puts it, by fostering a peace deal between the Palestinians and the Israelis. Uh, do you think that is a possibility? I have not been uh, very positive on that side for a very long time. Um, the Israelis have continuously uh, grabbed land and territory. They've continuously um, established outposts, built more settlements, um, taken over more swaths of land. Uh, I'm very, I'm very hard pressed to see how there can be a two-state settlement um, again. You know, there's very mixed messages coming out of the Trump administration, and one, one was his campaign promise to move the embassy to Jerusalem. I, I just can't see that helping the process. He's backtracked on that. But unless he can get some good concessions from the Israelis and find out ways that they can feel more comfortable, or this, and, and their administration right now is fairly hard, hard, hard right as well. Um, I, I fail to see how he's going to move this, this process forward. He may have used the, the military and the defense deal with the Saudi Arabia to kind of push Israel a little bit um, as far as the balance in the region, but that, that still remains to be seen. 
Tricia De Janeiro from World Policy Institute. Thank you very much.